have your Bible, Ruth, Ruth chapter 2 and verse 3, I'm going to read. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Amalek. This is a whole book dedicated to this young lady named Ruth, who lost her husband. She is from Moab. Moab is not a nation of Israel it's a nation close to Israel and they were not on a good relationship necessarily with Israel and she come from a nation where they worshiped other gods her husband moves to Moab because the economy was really really bad in Israel he hooks up with Ruth and then he dies so Ruth instead of going back to her mama's house she decides to connect with her mother-in-law she liked her so much that she moved to Israel and as she is in Israel, she's in, in the new territory. It's a new language. It's a new culture. Everything is new. They worship different gods and something happens. Mo, uh, uh, Naomi tells Ruth, she says, hey, uh, you've been sitting at home doing nothing. Go do something. And she sends her to glean grain. In other words, she sends her to the fields. She sends her not to get a tan, but to get some food and Ruth goes in there she starts to pick up some grain comes and brings it to her mama's house I want to share with you very practically tonight number one if they're not hiring don't sit at home for a young person idle time is the devil's time if you are single if you are young and you have a free time that means the devil has opportunity if you don't have a free time you can actually be holy the more free time you have the less chances you have to live your life right before God because that is the way you are wired you can't just do free time you always get find something troublesome to do that is the way God wired us for us to be occupied and busy with what God wants us to do in her case nobody was hiring she could not find a job a summer is coming right now a lot of you will be looking for a job even for those of you who are in middle school you're going to be looking for somebody's lawn to mow you're going to be looking for those, those $50 or those $15 or you're going to be looking for something to do. And I want to challenge you and present something to you. Here at the Hungry Generation, there is a thing going on during the summer called internship. It's specifically designed for the teenagers 14 till 18 and it's not for those kids, it's for you. Mm -hmm. the, those kids, if you're 14 till 18, that is you. You will say, no, this summer I just want to make those 200 bucks. For what? So you can buy shoes that your parents can buy for you? Don't waste this summer by trying to get a 200 bucks. Spend this summer by investing it into the kingdom of God. Give this summer to God and say, Lord, I want in two months, not just get a boyfriend, I want to get spiritual gifts. I want to heal the sick this summer. God, I want to be used by you to lead other people to Christ. I want you to give this summer to the Lord. For those of you who maybe you just finished with high school or you're finishing with high school and there is a pressure of the family, you need to go get a degree. You need to quickly sign up to a university or to CBC. I want to tell you something. Hold on. I know your parents might get mad at me. But tell your parents this. Most people who go to college switch their majors many times. I know people personally who have master's degree and they have a certificate hanging in their wall but they're working in a completely different job. They go to college, they accumulate so much debt. Why? Because there's a pressure of culture. Get a degree, get a degree, get a degree. I, I say this, take one year and pause. And no, not one year and go get pregnant. I'm not saying go one year and go and just travel and get a lot in debt but take one year and say God I want my roots to go deeper. God I want to learn more about you. God I want to learn more about myself. I want to learn what, who you made me to be instead of spending four years sixty thousand dollars accumulating debt and then never ending up doing that which I studied for. Come on somebody. That's why the internship exists in the fall. I want to challenge you. I want to dare you to do that because see what happens with Ruth is Ruth she begins to occupy herself. She begins to serve. She begins to give her free time to actually go pick up at somebody's field and as she was doing that little did she know the field she was picking up grain from in a matter of time 
will be the field she will own. The places you volunteer might be the places you will lead one day. If they're not hiring, volunteer. I always say to our guys, for those of them who are looking for a job and I say if you're currently right now between jobs, don't sit at home and catch up on latest Netflix TV shows. Don't do that. What you want to do is this, if you simply are without a job or maybe you are looking for a job and they're not hiring, listen, don't just sit at home and fall into depression. You get up in the morning, you dress up like you would go to work and you come to, to church at 9 o'clock and Pastor Vlad will be your boss. He won't be paying you much except compliments. <laughs> but we all know you need them. We all need them. But you're gonna get experience, you're gonna not waste your time, you're gonna feel productive and something is gonna happen. You never know where volunteering in somebody's field will lead you to. We have brothers in here today who literally when they couldn't find a job they came to church morning till, till the time that I was here. They would serve, they would volunteer and not only they eventually got a job but what happened is that they discovered certain gifts. They start preaching here on the stage and people are like man I want to do that. You don't end up on this stage just because you have a gift to preach. It's because you have a heart to serve. Come on somebody. Idle time is temptation time. Do not allow the devil to tempt you by making yourself too available to him. Fill yourself with good things. Fill your summer with important things and then you will see the devil will just simply have no hookup for you. I want to I wanna just mention one more thing for those of you who um, are maybe are just working now. You're working for somebody. I want you to begin to dream that one day you will be your own boss. But can I throw you a bigger dream which is the Boaz dream. Boaz was not his own boss. Boaz was a boss to other people. It's selfish when you only think about I just want to be independent. I want to be able to wake up at 10 o'clock and nobody to remind me to show up to work. I want to do what I want. That is a selfish thing. That is a limited to do, thing to do. You need to be dreaming that you will run a company. You will run an organization. Yes, you might be only 15. You might be 16. But listen, you're running your own family already. You got your siblings doing what you, what you want them to do. So God has a call for you and God has a destiny for you. And maybe you have an assignment of a Boaz inside of you. Come on somebody. I want you to quickly write down number two is that purity only happens when passion is regulated by our principles. So Ruth is volunteering at Boaz's field. She's hanging out there, she's serving and Boaz the boss, he just kind of lets her do that. He's very generous and, and we learn that God wants us not only to, to be our own bosses, God wants us to employ other people just like Boaz. But if you're like Ruth, God doesn't want you to sit at home and just wait for somebody to call. You go and serve and you go volunteer, pretend like you're working and God will take care of you and you will find a job, you will find your career, you will know what to do if you give your time to the Lord instead of just sitting at home and benching on Netflix. But I want you to see secondly is that Ruth is a single lady. She's a young lady, she's attractive. And her mother-in-law says, Ruth, um, girl, you gotta get married. She's like, well, nobody's proposing. And Naomi tells her this. She says, uh, why don't you go to Boaz and propose to him? <laughs> so girls, I'm gonna give you a permission and freedom in here today, okay? Because we have some Boazes, okay, who are slow asses. <laughs> And, and they need a little push sometimes. Now if you are 18 and below this for next two minutes I want you to completely forget. May God give you amnesia. Forget everything I said. But anybody who is older than that and you already have a car and you already have a job. I want you to see that something is happening. Where Ruth comes to Boaz, it's night. Now this is not a good thing to do during this culture but in this culture was fine. She comes during the night. The homeboy is sleeping. She comes, she lays next to him. Okay, that's what her mother-in-law says. So if your mom says that to do that, check it with your pastor first. But, <laughs> but the mother-in-law says go lay next to him. She lays next to him. There was nothing inappropriate that happened. The guy got pretty cold. He's looking for a blanket. He's realizing a woman is laying next to him. And this is what I want you to see. They could have quickly made out. They could have quickly had a little thing going. A little fling going. And Ruth looks at him and says, listen, uh, just want to give you a heads up, single, ready to mingle. I see you're single too. Your status hasn't changed on Facebook. Um, what do you think about taking this nice lady out for a date? 
and Boaz says you really would like want to go on a date with me yeah I've been waiting been giving the signals <laughs> didn't you get it and Boaz says well you know what this is great I, I would love to actually go out with you marry you right here on the spot but by the way there is a guy that's because they have a tradition where you can't just marry a widow the the closest to the family has to marry the widow first and if he declines it then somebody else needs to come in and marry and he says as much as I like you you're attractive you're young I, you, you fit I click I mean I feel that in my heart but I gotta go talk to the elders I want you to see this about Boaz he did not let his passion dictate his principles he let the principles regulate his passion that means if he's hot that does not mean that well he's not Christian it doesn't matter he's hot hell is hot too you don't want hell but you don't understand she can change no 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 you can't you can't let your passion dictate your life you gotta let the principles of God control your passion are you with me church and and Boaz as much as he liked Ruth he says I gotta check with the elders I gotta check with the principles of God and when the principles of God checked out eventually Boaz married never if you you will always make a mistake in your dating life and you will lose your purity if you let your passion take the driver's seat because passion a lot of times is another word for lust but if you let the passion go into school of your principles and if that passion does not pass the school of your principles then the passion has to be kicked out and say you know what this is not for me why because I'm not going to compromise my principles for somebody I'm attracted to for somebody I have a crush on or for somebody that makes me feel like little butterflies in my stomach is somebody with me right now see a lot of people are struggling with purity young people are struggling with purity for this reason because you can never be pure outside of your principles listen to this very carefully I'm going to share with you a secret purity only exists when you honor your standards when you step over your standards you can pray until your veins pop you will never be pure because purity is God's gift for honoring your standards and girls guys you have to have standards you have to make up those standards before a boy shows up you have to have those standards before the girl shows up you can't let somebody else make up those standards for you you can't let you can't let Kardashians make up standards for you you can't let your friends make up standards for you you can't let the culture you gotta make up the standards that are in line with God's word before anybody shows up can I get a witness in this place and you gotta understand that when you stand within when you stand for your standards something happens purity is automatic but the moment you step over your standards this is what's going to happen you're going to find yourself pregnant you're going to find yourself losing your virginity you're going to find yourself heartbroken you're like man i thought you loved me when he only wanted to get into your pants you find yourself heartbroken you say how did that happen anytime you step over your boundaries and step over your standards you'll find yourself heartbroken and you will lose your purity protect your standards protect your principles be like boaz saying you know what as much as I like you this is great but I gotta check with God's word you know what I gotta check if you go to church I gotta check if you even know Christ I mean I don't hate on you or anything I'm not racist none of that stuff but it's just I gotta honor my principles why because that's how I stay pure and that's how I stay protected come on somebody this is good preaching right there dating is like driving there's four things I want you to remember about dating and driving and number one is that in order to drive you have to have a license in order to date you have to be of certain age mm -hmm. nobody drives just because you know how to drive now just because you have a need for speed or some other app that you have on your phone where you're actually driving that does not qualify you for driving just because your parents let you back out your car is their car from the garage into the driveway it doesn't give you a permission to drive on the road just because you have attraction for someone it doesn't give you a right to date did he just say that I did just because we fell in love you're 15 you don't even know what that is 
just because you got the feelings raging and you're losing sleep and your pulse and you're sweating around that person and you start to stutter around the person it does not mean you are licensed by God to date you say so when do I date I'm gonna give you an answer you're not gonna like to hear whenever you're ready for marriage wow this guy is old school mm-hmm you want to avoid heartbreak, unwanted pregnancy, sexual transmitted diseases, demons that we pick up from other people who are not walking with the Lord. I'm going to give you one secret. One secret. Make a standard for yourself that if you're not ready for marriage, you're not ready for dating. That's all. Otherwise you're dating for what? For fun. If you want to have fun, get a hobby. If you want to have fun, hike Badger Mountain. If you want to have fun, get swimming lessons. If you want to get fun, get a job. If you want to get fun, get a dog, get a cat, get a friend for crying out loud. I mean get, a, get involved in the church. If you want to have fun, you don't use another person's heart for fun. Are you Dating is like driving number two. Dating is like driving you need a car you can have a license actually but if you don't have a working car you can drive correct so just because it's the right time for you to date it doesn't necessarily mean you should be dating if you are a wreck in a sense if you're heartbroken right now you've been through abuse you've been a heartbreak or maybe somebody broke your heart or you're emotionally really really just just you're going through something very difficult right now it's not a right place to go in into dating this is this is the devil's lie listen to me very carefully and it will save you years and hundreds of dollars from counseling this is the lie of the devil when you're hurting get a get a person to date why so they, they will fix you it's kind of like this your car has a running oil okay I mean you, you're coming out and the oil is just dripping from the car look if I just get it on the road it will fix itself now only girls can say that right <laughs> who have no idea how cars work nobody in the right mind will know that the car doesn't get fixed because you took it on the road actually the car breaks down more if you take it on the road if you say that I know I'm hurting I know I've been rejected. I know I've never had a dad in my life. I know that my ex-boyfriend cheated on me. I know that this has happened to me. So if I just find me another guy, I will be automatically fixed. You're being lied to. You're being deceived. You're actually getting on the road without a tire. You're getting on the road with a broken, broken vehicle. Your experience is not going to be enjoyable and it's not because you don't have a license. It's because you're a mess. Get yourself turned into a body shop, into a mechanic, the Holy Ghost and have the Holy Ghost tweak certain things, adjust certain things, put some oil inside of you, put some gas inside of you, put some AC inside of you and fix you up a little bit. So when you go into a dating, you don't go to look for a Messiah, you look for a boyfriend. Come on somebody. Number three. Dating is like driving in the sense that you have to have a license. Number two is that you have to have a working car. And number three, you have to have a road to drive on. Roads, the more expensive your car is, the more you need a road to ride on. Instead of a gravel, a lawn, or your backyard, right? If you have a really, really expensive car, you can't drive that car anywhere and everywhere. You have to have a paved road. You have to have it where it's a pavement, where there's concrete or, or where there is asphalt. You have to have a specific road. For us in dating, the road is purity. That means you can be all good yourself. You can, it can be your right time to date. But honestly, if you start taking your relationship and your heart on the grave, on the gravel, I'm sorry, on the gravel of compromise, you will find very soon your heart be broken. You will find your tires popping. You will find the paint peeling. You will find rocks hitting your hood. You will find smoke. You will find, you will find a lot of uncomfortable things. You're like, man, but it was my right time. I was in a healthy position. You have to understand just because you're a pr pr proper vehicle, you got a proper uh, license, that does not mean you have to take this into a gravel or a country road. You got to stay on the purity. 
on the path of purity. Are you with me? Dating is like driving. Fourthly, is that you have to follow the signs. When you get on the road, you don't do what you want to do. You got to follow the signs. I mean, there are signs like yield. So when you start dating, you got to yield to God. Come on, somebody. There's a dating called, uh, there is a sign on the road called speed limit. That means when you're dating, that means you got to reduce how many text messages you send to the other person a day. Amen. <laughs> you got to reduce how much time you spend with them a day. That means speed limit. That means you can't isolate your whole family and your friends because you got that boyfriend or you got that girlfriend and pretend the world doesn't exist because they exist. You got to have a speed limit. You can't push the pedal to the metal. <laughs> you got to slow it down, honey. Slow down. There's also another sign called do not enter. What does that mean? There are certain places you don't enter within the other person until you are married. There's, there are signs. One of the signs that we have right now on the road is called uh, don't text and drive. Why? You're going to watch a video that's behind me on what happens when you text and drive. When you text and drive, you get distracted. When you text and drive, you get into an accident. I'm going to show you. Texting and driving. This is what happens when you break the rules. Now, whoever invented the rule for you not to text and drive, they did not want to take your phone away. They wanted you to drive not into your graveyard, but into your destination right I am an experienced broker of the law I have under my belt two accidents from texting and driving one happened seven years ago and one happened nine years ago so I have the authority to speak to you about this this can wait when you're driving this can wait in, anytime you lie to yourself and you say no it can't that Instagram whoever liked my Instagram if I don't find out who liked my latest Instagram picture I am gonna have a heart attack <laughs> if I don't find out what that person texted me on my snapchat I am literally my, my heart is gonna stop beating if, if I don't get it right now no you have to tell yourself this this can wait same thing in dating sex and getting physical can wait until you get to the destination of the altar call Come on. and if you say simply no 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 it can't wait we gotta have it right now the devil is a liar this is exactly Come what's gonna happen to you <laughs> come on somebody People sometimes say, but you don't understand, but we know we're going to marry each other. We, we can see the wedding from here already, where, where, when it's going to happen. So it allows us the freedom to do that. Well, <laughs> you know, I have a house and in my house we have a fireplace. I can see the fireplace. Imagine if I would take the fire from the fireplace and simply say, it's still the same fire, the same house. I'm just going to take it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten feet away from the fireplace. It's still the same house. It's still the same fire. The same beautiful fire. 10 feet from the fireplace will set my house on fire <laughs> and we will have a big problem okay when God puts physical relationship in marriage he puts it for your protection when God says this can wait when you're dating he's not trying to steal your fun he just wants you when you get fun you actually keep having fun without all kinds of complications and problems that will follow when you start to get this while you are driving. Young people, I want to encourage you. God loves you so much and that's why He invented purity and that's why He created principles. Not to steal your fun, not to steal your joy, but to protect your heart from being broken and protect your future from being ripped apart by sin and Satan. Are you with me? If you want to live pure, honor your standards protect your standards let no fool I don't care if that's some basketball player a football player I don't care what car his parents drive that he picks you on on listen you gotta keep your standards and if he doesn't honor your standards you call police oh but if you love me you would do it if you love me you'll get a job put a ring on it and take me to the altar and so I just wanted to um, I have one more thing that I want to share but, but for the lack of time I'm gonna land the plane uh, right on this. God wants you to live your life with the purpose, God wants you to live your life with His presence and God wants you to live your life also with purity. I've been, I'm 31 years of age, became a youth, past, youth pastor at 16 and you know when I got married at 24 I was married 
and I was a virgin. I lived in the world just the same as you do. Was it easy for me? No. But I can tell you one thing, that it was worth it. Today I'm married to a very, very beautiful young lady and I enjoy all the benefits and I enjoy all the blessings of, of that marriage. For many of you, maybe that's not your story. You say, Vlad, I blew it already. When you came to Christ, God resets the clock. From that point on, begin to live as though you've never sinned again. Begin to live holy. Begin to set your standards up. Begin to spend your weekends not in the clubs where most likely you're not going to find the Holy Ghost but you're going to find some other ghosts who are going to take stuff from you. You begin to come to night prayer. When you have free time, begin to come to church on, sun on Sunday. Begin to join the home group. Begin to get your life in line with God's Word and God's principles so that the Holy Spirit can use you.